Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green ramp deck featuring Leyline of Abundance, the new enchantment from M20 that we can put on the battlefield if we have it in our opening hand, which can allow for some very explosive starts because whenever we tap a creature for mana we can add an additional green to our mana pool. And then as if that weren't enough, for 8 mana we also get a nice mana sink to spend all that extra mana to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, which also has some neat synergies within the deck. And then the other heavy hitter in the deck is Nissa, who shakes the world, which also rewards us for sticking to mono green, as now every forest taps for double green. And then Nissa also turns our lands into 3-3 three, three creatures, which also has great synergy with Leyline, since those also count as creatures making mana. So then the forest with Nissa will make 3 green mana essentially, one additional from Nissa and one additional for each Leyline we have in play. And the fact that those lands also have vigilance means we can attack with them, and then before damage potentially use the Leyline's ability for 8 mana to put an additional plus one plus one counter on it, which also comes up quite often. So with Nissa and Leyline you can have some truly incredible starts. I've had it a few times where I opened up with double Leyline into a turn one Lanner Elves, then on turn two play a second land, Lanner Elves taps for three mana with the two Leylines, so we can have five mana total, which is enough for a turn two Nissa who shakes the world, untap a land, the land also now makes four mana, and we can spend that four mana on something else, and then you can kind of uh, quickly take over the game from there. So that's kind of the goal of the deck, try and assemble all these different mana generation spells and then with all that mana we can probably figure out a way to win the game. One of them is just sinking mana into a leyline, the other one is Finale of Devastation. We have the full four copies because the failed case is we can just search up one of our mana elves if we play Finale for X equals 1 or 2, but if we can play Finale for X equals 10, then not only do our creatures get plus 10 plus 10 until end of turn and haste, but we also get to search up an Andre's Forerunners, which when it enters the battlefield gives all our creatures plus 2 plus 2, Vigilance and Trample until end of turn, which is usually enough to end the game on the spot. So that's kind of the combo finish that our deck is capable of. And looking at the rest of the deck, it's pretty straightforward. Lots of mana elves, four copies of Lanner Elves, of course, which is the best one. Then at two mana, we have four copies of Druid of the Cow, which we're playing over the Leafkin Druid, since it is an elf for the Marwyn Synergy. Then we have four copies of Incubation Druid, which we can pretty easily adapt to make even more mana. Also has a bit of synergy with Leyline of Abundance. If we put a counter on every creature, then that will also count for the Incubation Druid, making additional mana. And then also four copies of Paradise Druid. And then at three mana, we have the full four copies of Marwyn, the Nurture, which is a real payoff card for playing all these elves. As whenever an elf enters the battlefield, Marwyn picks up a plus one plus one counter. And then she taps to add an amount of green mana equal to her power. So also scales up nicely the more we start activating Leyline of Abundance. And then we also have the full four copies of Beast Whisper as our card draw engine. Since we have so many cheap creatures in the deck, we can get the Beast Whisper in play very quickly and then start leveraging it as a card draw engine. Then we've got our four copies of Leyline, which even if we don't have them in our opening hand are still fine, since later in the game we can play Leyline and then make use of the fact that we already have a bunch of mana elves in play and those will be able to tap for additional mana right away. Then at 5 mana we've got our 4 copies of Nissa who shakes the world. And then we also have a single copy of Vivian Reed providing a little bit of utility, destroying artifacts and enchantments, and creatures with flying. And of course the plus 1 providing additional creatures as well. And then our finisher is Andre's Forerunner, so usually don't want to draw it, but even just playing it for 8 mana can be fine. But usually want to have it in the deck somewhere to search up with Finale of Devastation, which is a 4 off which can, as a fail case, always just search up one of our cheap mana creatures. And there are mana base, 22 beautiful basic forests. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and no Leyline, but a nice opening hand still. With a potential turn to Marwyn, into a bunch more elves, into a Nyssa. Not exactly sure how aggressive we should be mulliganing towards hands with Lanner Elves and Leyline, but those cards in our opening hand definitely affect our win percentage quite a bit. So up against Isolated Chapel and a Swamp, so could be black-white. Vampires here as we see Adanto Vanguard. The Vampire matchup is tricky, they do have some good tools, Soren can take out some of our Elves and they have a lot of life gain, but uh, if we manage to go over the top then we're usually fine. Alright, so I can run out Nissa already, that seems fine. I think Nissa into 2-man Elf is the best we can do here. Get an attack in first. 
Might as well. And then I think I'll run out to Druid of the Cowl. Which has a bit of power, so it can maybe discourage an attack from the Vanguard, we'll see. And there's Soren. Minuses, as we see Champion of Dusk, so that's a nice play for the opponent. Opponent down to 13 already. Goes after Nyssa. So letting Nyssa take 3 is probably fine. Getting the opponent to 9 life when they have a Surin in place is probably not gonna make a huge difference. Drawing another Nyssa is nice. So let's uh, run out Incubation Druids. Pamar win a bunch. Can make Marwin up to 4-4 four, four here, so it can attack past the Champion of Dusk, or at least straight for it. Could also run out a second Nissa right away. We'll start by uh, untapping our land. The land shall you. So it's a pretty tricky turn, I know I want to kill Surin. So what if I send Marwin at opponents, as well as the two forests? And then this would be hitting our opponent for 10. And I can send a two one-powered creatures at Soren. I don't get to adapt Incubation Druid this way. If we keep one of these elves back, I could potentially still adapt Incubation Druid using the Forest for mana as well. But I think I want to make this attack. And then if they want to block a 3-3, Marwin gets in and doesn't trade. And we at least guarantee that we kill Soren, which I think is important. So we'll try this. Opponent does go for the trade on Marwin. Alright. Opponent down to 7. And they're just gonna start unloading some cheap creatures here. And a Legion Lieutenant, that's a good one. Alright, we're just waiting for a finale here, would probably seal the deal. Our opponent paying for life just to grow the knight does get it up to a 3-4, so it lines up well against our 3-3 elementals, but seems a little questionable. So now we can just uh, animate another land. I don't even think we need the second Nissa here to win the game, I can just adapt one Incubation Druid using our untapped forest and let's say Lander Elves, move to combat, attack with all the Vigilant Forests, and the two Incubation Druids, even the one that hasn't adapted yet, and then before damage use our Vigilant Forest to tap for double green each, to adapt a second Incubation Druid, and then we would have five creatures with three power versus the opponent's four blockers without any lifelink, and that would seal the deal. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and we've got a nice opener here with both Leyline and the Lanner Elves. That's what we're hoping for. So we'll keep. And then, uh, yeah, let's see how quickly we can get to a finale for 10. I have had opponents concede to just uh, early ley lines into Lanner Elves, and there we go. Yeah, you do get some free wins with this deck, even if that means you don't get to actually play it out. Alright, we're on the play. Another nice opening hand, so easy keep. Potential turn to Marwin. On the play, even. Well, let's see what we're up against. Hopefully no turn one mountain. It's a stomping ground instead. Hinterland Harbor, sadly Lava Coil for Marwin. Otherwise we could have gone Beast Whisper into Druid of the Cowl next turn, which would have been pretty nice. Still gonna run out to Beast Whisper here, I think. Seems okay. And then hope they don't have another Lava Coil here. So is this uh, Teamer Elementals, perhaps? As we see Leafkin Druid into Lanarals. Alright, at least we get to and draw some cards here. Nissa's nice. And back up Nissa. No real point in attacking. So far we were spared the Risen Reef. Back up Beast Whisper. If I play Leyline, still have 6 mana, 
It's probably a good place to start. I think I just animate my land and attack for 3 and keep the second beast sister in hand just in case her opponent has a Chandra to wipe the board of all non-elementals and then we should be in fine shape next turn if we can uh, play beast sister and then maybe follow it up with even more creatures to draw cards and if we ever find finale on this board we could just win the game on the spot they have their own Nissa And a spark double, nice. So doubles up Nissa. Start here. And yeah, there we go. Finale of devastation. Should be able to cast it for enough here. So let's see. Six, seven, eight, ten, and then X equals eleven should do it. And of course they all get haste thanks to the finale, trample thanks to the forerunners. And yeah, that should be more than enough to seal the deal here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, so we're on the play. And no leyline, no Lanner Elves, but probably still a keepable hand. Being on the play also helps. Facing a turn one semi guild gate, so probably the scapeshift deck. It seems like every other deck nowadays is the scapeshift deck. Alright, never mind. It's uh, an old one, Gates. Should be a fun one. Of course, Gates of Blade is pretty effective against our deck, so hopefully we can dodge that card. Sweepers in general are a way to beat us. Just a grow spiral for now. If we can stick one of our Planeswalkers, Vivian especially, being able to take out their enchantment that draws additional cards is pretty big. And Nissa also providing a steady stream of creatures is nice. So the question is, do we play Lanner Elves or save it? And then run out Nissa. Uh, whoops, I think I messed up here. I thought I could still adapt my Incubation Druid second main, but I guess that didn't quite work out since we don't have a Ley Line in play. So I missed out on one point of damage with Marwyn. I could have attacked and then still played my Lanner Elves. Oh well. There's a Guild Summit, so that's one we can destroy with Vivian. And a Druid of the Cowl. So how much do we want to overextend here? Opponent's got five gates in play, so even if we adapt Incubation Druid, it still dies to the Gates Ablaze. Do we just assume our opponent doesn't have it if they didn't play it here? They could be sandbagging, but it's definitely risky on their part as well. So I think I'm gonna play under the assumption that our opponent doesn't have it. So how much mana are we making here? Eight. Destroy the Guild Summits. Animate an extra land. Play Druids. And then I can attack. And still adapt Incubation Druids. Opponent's down to 5. So Nissa could just finish the job even if they do have the Gates Ablaze. Alright, 3 life is relevant. Back up to 8. Do they have the Sweeper? There it is. So everything gone. And a Gatebreaker Ram. Alright, well, now we're in trouble. 
Let's see what we can find with Vivian. Come to me. And raise four honors. Can we cast that right now? I guess we can. But it just trades for the ram. Maybe that's still the play here. I guess the land also gets a nice bonus, but... The land for us. So our opponent could just block the land, take 7 down to 1. Will they do that? Not sure. I think I send both. So our opponent's down to 1. And Nissa's at 8. Alright, they have another 3 life gained here, back up to 4. But that means that the ram stays 7-7, seven, seven, so we can potentially block with the Forerunners to protect our Planeswalkers. And if we can ultimate Nissa, we could be in fine shape, although now Root finds 2 more gates, ram up to a 9-9, nine, nine, and can kill Nissa if we don't jump with the Forerunners, so that was good for them. Anything else? Even if we jump, Nissa goes to 6, so can't ultimate, so I think we just gotta let her go. And a second ram. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. No one knows the wilds like I do. I guess Beast work can draw some cards. But the rams are very quickly gonna present lethal as well here. So yeah, the Gates of Blaze kind of wrecked us, but um, not sure if we would have been able to beat it even if we tried to play around it more. Backup Guild Summits. Yeah, I guess we were just missing the finale to really close out the game once we had that much mana available. Now, Deafening Clarion should seal the deal, opponent gaining a million life as well. I can't save Vivian, but I can take out a ram on the way out. So I did miss out on at least one point of damage when Marwyn did not attack, so that could have potentially affected the outcome of the game. Although opponent probably just then trades for the ram, and uh, they still had the second ram and the Gate Colossus, so we probably still would have been in trouble. And this also doesn't seem like a matchup that should favor us if our opponent has Gates of Blaze and Deafening Clarion as three mana sweepers in the main deck. So yeah, either way, GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Lenor Elves in our opener once again, so we'll keep. And let's see how fast we can get our Nissa in play. Up against Temple of Mystery, so it could be the Flash deck, could be the Scapeshift deck. So it's all about speed here. If we can uh, play turn 3 Nissa before the Flash deck gets its counter spells up, then we're in great shape. Looks like it's Scapeshift, so... Again, speed is of the essence. Get in for three. And I think I'll play Incubation Druid in case we want to adapt it next turn. We can maybe get an attack in. So, if they're placed a fairy here, it's not too impressive. And we're just hoping to draw into Finale as soon as possible. Marwyn's not bad. So let's see here. Can play Marwyn. Animate Forests. Play Druids. And then... Attack with everyone. And then still... Adapter Incubation Druids before damage here. Alright, put them down to 5, and they're pretty far from casting Escape Shift, just has to concede. So yeah, we had a nice explosive start, and that's how we kind of have to beat some of the other goldfish decks out there. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a turn 1 laterals, so I'm gonna keep. 
what are we facing? Swamp. There's Nissa. So turn two we can play Incubation Druid. Turn three I can decide what we want to do next based on how many creatures are still alive. And Dusk Legion Zealots. Well, could still be Vampires, could be something else. Um, I guess I'll run out Paradise Druids. Over Incubation Druid. It doesn't block the Zealots, but at least it's a little safer against spot removal. Alright, play crafter. I guess we'll sag the Lunar Elves. So it's some sort of uh, mono black sacrifice deck. So we don't quite get to run out Nissa, but I'll uh, still settle with the Beast Whisper here. Which hopefully survives. If it dies, then maybe Paradise Druid lives and we get to play Nissa into Incubation Druid. Alright, Chupacabra was pretty good here, killing Beast Whisper. Attack for three. And Lunar Elves, that's also a nice follow-up to a Beast Whisper, so I could go Beast Whisper into Lunar Elves and then wait on this half for a turn. Don't hit it. Because then if I played Incubation Druid after untapping a land with Nissa, we'll get to draw an additional card, maybe. But yeah, any removal-heavy deck can be a difficult matchup since if they get to disrupt or Elves early to deny the ramp, then we'll fall further behind. Find discarding a forest here. Another Burgle Rat. Probably don't want to discard Nissa here, even though the Incubation Druid potentially draws a card with the Beast Whisper. Just take three. Alright, perfect. So Nissa into Animated Lands. Don't think I want to trade my land for Chupacabra here and the rat. Just play another Paradise Druid. Alright. Could have also tapped the Paradise Druid for mana instead of a forest, since then our forest would have made more mana with Nyssa. Uh, the drawback there, of course, is that our Paradise Druid would lose Hexproof, although arguably we've got uh, creatures that are more valuable here in Beast Whisper. And keeping a creature on defense could be nice too, but our opponent's just gonna scoop it up. I guess they were out of removal, and the Beast Whisper plus Nyssa combo was gonna pull us further and further ahead. Alright, we're on the draw. No Lanner Elves, no Ley Lines, so we're also on the draw. This hand could be too slow, which sounds pretty crazy. We've got like a turn for Nyssa, bunch of uh, Mana Elves, but I think this hand might just be a Mulligan on the draw. I'll try it. This hand's not much better, but I don't think I want to go to 5, so we'll keep. And then what do we put on the bottom? Maybe just Druid of the Cowl. And then we can go turn 2 Paradise Druid, turn 3 Marwyn. Or Beast Whisper if we draw a land, and then go from there. Turn one Mountain into a Lava Runner. Well, this is not a good matchup for us. Moderat has a lot of ways to kill our early creatures. Goblin Chain Whirler lines up quite well against some of our Elves. Lunar Elves, Paradise Druid, or Marwyn if we don't have a counter on it. So don't expect to win this one. But hopefully they can uh, put us out of our misery quickly. A turn three Chain Whirler will do just that. If we knew we were up against Moderat, we could have made a case for keeping the Druid of the Cal over Paradise Druid. Alright, so no Chain Whirler. Is there a world where we trade here? Don't think so. They could have also been missing the third land, which could be the case here, in which case we don't want to bank on the fact that our opponent doesn't have Chain Whirler in hand. If I run out of Beast Whisper, it could die to a Burn Spell. They could finish off the Druid as well then. If I play Marwyn and they run out Chain Whirler, then we're going to be extra sad. So I think I'll just go for the Beast Whisper and then hope for the best. And then maybe if they kill the Beast Whisper, the Paradise Druid doesn't die. And we get to play Vivian. So Lightning Strike the Beast Whisper. And there's a land, is there a Chain Warrior? There is. Alright, so playing Marwyn would not have worked out here. But we're still pretty far behind. Playing Leyline doesn't do a whole lot. Playing Marwyn also doesn't. So yeah, we're pretty dead here. I guess I'll play the Leyline. 
do have a Vivian to kill Experimental Frenzy, but that doesn't help if we're so far behind on board. I've had previous iterations of this deck where we played cards like Steel Leaf Champion, uh, cards like Growth Chamber Guardian. Those are a bit more effective against the red deck. Our current build is quite soft to it, but uh, it does make our deck a lot more explosive in the matchups where we don't need those beefy creatures. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with kind of the dream hand here, Leyline plus Lanarals. Just missing the uh, Nissa to go with it. And I might just finally have Devastation for a second Lanarals here next turn. Could also run out to Beast Whisper. I've got some options. Alright, another Leyline. So I could go for the kind of the grindy value play of Beast Whisper into Beast Whisper, which seems nice, or I can finally for an extra elf. I think I like developing my mana first and then go for the Beast Whispers once we have even more mana available. And then I think I'll get the Incubation Druid, since that can potentially make even more mana, especially with the Leyline maybe putting a counter on it. Black White, Tithe Taker, turn two, and a Lunar Elf to pick up. Alright, so. Let's start by playing Beast Whisper. Into a Lunar Elf's. Finds a land, which we haven't played yet, and pass a turn. Alright, not a bad turn three. Looks like they might have an answer for the Beast Whisper here. Mortify. Fair enough. We'll take it. So can we do something with this Incubation Druid and the Ley Line? I guess I can. I can activate Ley Line. And then still play the Beast Whisper. Could have also played the other Leyline first. Not sure which was better here. Alright, let's start drawing some cards. Tapping lands can be bad if we draw into a Nissa, but it's probably okay. More elves is great. And there's Nissa. So I can play Nissa. Now my forest taps for 4 mana. Which is not quite enough to activate Leyline, but enough to adapt Incubation Druid end of turn here. And then next turn we can start going crazy with Leyline activations. Second Midnight Reaper. Activate Leyline, and I'm guessing we can probably safely attack with everyone at this point, since we have another Leyline activation at the ready here, thanks to our two forests. So these Midnight Reapers aren't actually trading for the Lanner Elves. We've got the Adapt sound going off in the background here. Uh-oh, network error. That's no good. So how much damage would we have had here, since of course Tithe Taker only makes us pay additional mana during the opponent's turn, so we were fine paying 8 mana for Leyline, and then the lands deal 10 damage, plus another 12 damage here, so 22 total. So I guess you'll just have to take my word for it that we won this one. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We've gotten pretty lucky so far with uh, Lanner Elves in our opening hand. Opponent also with turn 1 Lanner Elves. Alright, 
So it's going to be a fair fight. We've got our turn 3 Nissa lined up. Let's see if our opponent can do the same as we see Sulfur Falls, our opponent on Teamer. So let's just play Nissa. And yeah, next turn we're already looking at Andre's Four Honors to close out the game on turn 4. Let's see if our opponent can do anything to disrupt that. Right, I'll have a Coil of Marwyn is a good place to start. Although, is it going to be enough? Finally, we can't, of course, search up the Andre's Forerunner that's in our hands. But uh, let's see what we can come up with here. So I can just play this. Yeah, that seems fine. And yeah, this is just a lethal, so nice turn for win here, even through a bit of disruption. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, so we're on the draw and we've got quite the exciting hand here. We're looking at a potential turn to Nyssa, which is what dreams are made of. So definitely keeping. Here go. Now we are on the draw, so it's not like the complete blowout on the play, but uh, still not too bad. Azuria's Guildgate from the opponents could be the Scapeshift deck, instead Temple of Silence. So some sort of Asper deck. Let's see how they deal with turn to Nyssa. I guess they could have a Spell Pierce. No Spell Pierce. This land now taps for 4 mana. I um, think we're fine just turning out to Paradise Druid and then next turn... How much can we cast this finale for? Gotta start doing some math. As we see Untapped Godless Shrine, maybe for a Cry of the Carnarium. Oath of Kaya, that's fine. Kills our forests. Does take away 4 mana, which is significant, so I don't think we'll be able to set up a lethal finale of Devastation. So let's see here. Four, eight, eleven, fourteen. I can play Lanner Elves, followed by finally for X equals eleven here. And I guess that's actually still enough because the Lanner Elves will gain haste. Bam! Well, nice uh, turn 3 kill here. Not bad, not bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and fine hand. We've got a single ley line plus a mana elf into an early Nyssa and then a finale as maybe our finisher. Opponent can take their mulligan before we have to reveal the ley line so it doesn't affect their mulligan decision. And we're off to the races. Let's see what we're up against. Stomping ground. Alright, I guess I'll play the Paradise Route so it's safe from removal. To guarantee this Nissa next turn. And a Leafkin Route, so it looks like some Elemental or Gruel deck. Get in and play Druid. So, how big is this finale going to be next turn? Scampering Scorcher, that's acceptable. Another Leyline. Does playing Leyline make additional mana, is the question. And how much mana can we make? Rise, my 
then 13, so x equals 11. And that should do the job here. Everything gains trample, so those scampering scorcher tokens will not uh, prevent a ton of damage here. Alright, so merely a turn 4 kill this time. Well, that was a pretty fun set of games there. A lot of games ending very quickly, so maybe not so fun for our opponents. But uh, yeah, hopefully I got to showcase the power level of the deck if it goes off. It does have some weaknesses, sweeper effects, uh, monored just with a ton of cheap removal. Those are not the decks we want to be facing. But Undisrupted we can kill very quickly, so in my experience the Scapeshift matchup for example has been quite decent. Of course they can have uh, cards like Time Wipe, which I've seen some people main deck nowadays, which uh, can definitely be a blowout. But other than that the main game plan lines up quite well, since we're usually a little bit faster and we can potentially even trample over some zombie tokens as well. Sweet, so that's gonna do it for me today. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.